So today we're going to show you how to install a vinyl privacy fence. We have three different grades that we're going to show you. We're going to show you how to do real vinyl supplied by SWI. We're going to show you how to install big box store vinyl that comes in a kit, but you still got to buy the post separate. And then we're going to show you how to install, in my opinion, complete garbage. But for some odd reason it sells. We're still going to show you. First thing is we're going to go ahead and set the post. But we've already shown you how to do that in a separate video and make sure and see that right here. We're just gonna go ahead and get this done real quick. We called in a truck and we're gonna go ahead and get that concrete poured. We have dug all the holes to 36 inches deep and we just did that with an auger on our skid steer. All of them are equal. Everything is exactly the same. Oh, look at that, I just, I just nicked it. Dang it. I am noticing just unwrapping this post, I have some minor pits in the vinyl from it being extruded or made but on their post what they have is they've cut a hole in there because they want to see some of that concrete go into that uh, post cavity but instead of just having a little bit of concrete in there we're going to go for the whole entire thing because we're going to stab it and just by lifting up these three posts i can tell that there's a little bit of a difference between what we supply and sell versus what they supply and i blame it for the reason that vinyl has such a bad name crappy vinyl that's made people have a bad taste in their mouth and saying hey that's not going to last and that's not going to hold up it's going to blow down in the wind it's going to snap 100 percent. this stuff right here this pre-built section that we're going to install right here agreed we have seen more of that stuff that has been installed and just looks like swiss cheese at the end of it because it gets so brittle in the sun because there's there's not any meat and potatoes to it it's a glue together panel okay these two posts are supplied by us. This is the stuff that we supply and we install every day, all day. On these two, these are pre-routed end posts. You have end posts, line posts, blank posts, corners. I forgot corners. This is the end of a line, so this would be the second post back, so this would be a line post. So you could continue installing your fence. So at a gate, you would need an end post. At your house, you would need an end post. At a corner, you'd need a corner post. If you're gonna have a gate right next to a house, you're gonna need one blank and one end post. And on this section, there's no holes because we're gonna install this section of pre-built vinyl. So we're gonna install this right here and it gets installed on brackets. If you go down any hills, you're gonna to have to stair step it because these panels, they don't, they don't rack. So I can't push it one way to get it to form to a slope. So if you're gonna go down a slope, you're gonna to have to stair step each and every single panel. All right, so we're gonna let these sit overnight. We're gonna let them cure and we're gonna come back tomorrow. We're gonna to install each section. Maybe you can choose on which one you should do. So it's obviously been maybe like a day or two since we last showed you what we were working on here. Okay, it's been a couple weeks. We finished what I'm doing here. We'll get right back to it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a perfect snow angel. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start with these two supplied by the big box store. The big box store professional grade, and this is gonna be the big box store panel trash. There's probably gonna be a huge quality difference between this one and that one. This one, as you can see, is already pre-assembled. All we have to do is we're gonna have to cut it to fit in between the width of the posts, and this one we're gonna have to cut the rails. So they do give us two pieces of U-channel. They are gonna go in between the two holes here, and we're gonna use some self-tapping screws to screw those on. I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that those are not included in this kit, which they are not. The little pan head self-tapper is about three quarter inches long. And one in the middle. Now we have their two rails and they have these little notches on them. So what happens is you shove this rail inside the post and then this grabs to the back side of the post so it can't come back out. They tried to notch it on this side for us but they didn't poke all the way through. Well that's weird. I've already got a separation between my rib. It's like a bad bonding or something. I bet I could apply a whole bunch of pressure on this and just pull it all the way apart. Maybe we'll try and use that as a top. Yeah, no, that one's, that one's doing it too. That's a scary situation there. Remember, this is pro grade, pro grade vinyl right here. We are 84 and a half inches. 
so we need to add three inches to our 84 and a half, which is going to be 87 and a half. Right here. That mark will be on the inside of the post. I'm gonna use a skill saw to go ahead and cut these rails because I didn't feel like getting out the chop saw. Make sure that you use a fine tooth blade. If you use a rougher wood cutting blade, what's gonna happen is you don't have enough teeth and it's gonna grab one of those pieces and start sending chips out of the vinyl. And make sure and cut slow. Since they already pre-notched those for us and we just cut the notches off that one side, what we're gonna do is we have a set of notchers here and we're gonna go ahead and put those notches back in there. For where to get them, see the link below. So there's a bottom rail. What is that? Oh, there's two of them. It's like a silicone, something or other. I don't know. You're gonna line it up on the hole and this U-channel is too long. So what we're gonna do is insert just like that. So then it's, the U-channel goes to the inside. I don't know what the heck that thing is there, but it's not wanting to stay at all. So we're gonna take this one picket and it doesn't matter if you start with tongue or whether you start with groove. So we got that one in there and we're just gonna keep on filling it in. Uh-oh, we got some wind issues going on. I like to grab at the bottom and shove it all the way that way as far as hard as I possibly can. Just make sure everything's tight. Check all your pickets, make sure you have no gaps. Make sure that all the tongues are inside the grooves nice and snug. Take your tape measure and you can measure to the post or you can go inside the U-channel. I come up with seven inches right there. So that's my gap that I have to fill. My picket is six inches wide, so that tells me I need a one inch filler on this side. You're gonna use a table saw or else you're gonna use your circular saw or there's a third option, you could use a utility knife. This is our one inch piece. We're gonna go ahead and put this in our U-channel after we put our fence back together. All right, we're just gonna put that next rail on before it blows apart again. All right, so we went ahead and put our notches back on that rail. All right, we're gonna put one end right on top. I like to take my other end and I just like to rest it on the top here so I can slide it into that hole. Now when you get to this point, you're kind of at a funky situation, so you gotta do something a little bit different. What I like to do there, Bring the rail off the top of the post, then see if we can get it to insert in that hole. We can see that it already started on the top, we just gotta work that bottom in there. With that silicone in there, I'm having a hard time because that beating of silicone's in there. It grips the vinyl. There's one section of the big box store. When you do go down to the big box store and you buy your brand new fence, don't forget the glue and the cap is not included. Or the self tappers that I put in that U-channel. You gotta buy that separate. This is low VOC PVC vinyl fence cement. They give you a big tube so that, that way you can use two little pea-sized drops to glue your cap on it and then you can use the rest of it later on to glue your fence back together. Ah! Hang on to that. All right, now for this bundle of fun. This one is amazing. We could have taken this one, we could have taken that one, we could have set them exactly to the way that they needed to go in, which means I wouldn't have to use a saw to cut them to length, but the whole reason that we're cutting these and the whole reason we're not installing full sections is so that you guys can see how you have to install it when you go to when you have to go to cut it. Okay, well, what happens when I get to a short section? I need to cut it. That's why we're installing it the way that we're installing it. This 
This is the top, this is the middle, and that's the bottom. It's all pre-built, pre-assembled. The only thing you gotta do is screw your brackets on your posts and install this trash on it. I mean, install this panel on the brackets. I'm not a big fan of this stuff. There is no flexing, there is no nothing to this. And once that glue starts coming apart, your fence is gonna start deteriorating and your blow apart. So we need to have a bracket on this rail, that makeshift rail, and that rail. Now this is not a rail, this is just two pieces of vinyl glued to the fence panel. That's a makeshift rail, a really thin one. And these are just two pieces of vinyl glued to vinyl to make it look like it's a rail. I think we'll plan on a two inch gap at the top, 68. And here, this is where you'll want to use a pencil. So we're going to mark two inches, 17 and a half, and 66. Then we have these brackets that you have to buy. It doesn't ever come in just a kit. So you got to buy the brackets. I'll give you these little screws here. Okay, so you see how this is more of a wood screw and it just has a straight wood tip, whereas that one has a self-tapper. They have this little thing right here. They give you that little section there to the point where you can fine tune it. We're gonna rough set our brackets, test fit our panel. Go to the other side, put those brackets in. If you're installing a system like this, make sure if you have a whole bunch of screws like I do and you got screws coming out of, take one of your post caps. Use it to hold your screws. And then make sure and take it and put it out of your work area so that you don't accidentally kick it and knock it all over the place. All I'm doing right now is I'm just checking to make sure that all of our brackets are 100%. That one looks good, that one looks good, and the bottom looks good. So next what I can do, I can cheat. Since I can't flex this panel whatsoever, the other thing I can do, I can take my pencil and I can mark my top on this post. You could use this panel to mark your top or you could take a level. If you take a level across the top, you wanna to take a level that will span that whole distance, so probably a six foot level. But the nice thing about taking a panel and test fitting it and then just marking your top is you already know where it's gonna tie in at. So if you're stair stepping, you're definitely gonna to wanna to do this method. Cause I'm making sure I'm at the top of my bracket and I'm just gonna mark my top right there. And the way that I know that it is my top is to make sure that, that whole panel touches the whole entire face of that post. We'll take our square, and then I think we were 17 and a half. As you can see with this fence, with this style, it doesn't have the holes pre-routed in it for you. It's a bracket system for one, not a fan of it. All I can do is give you my opinion, which that's what I'm doing, not a fan. Another thing that I won't do is I won't work on them. They're so brittle and over time what can happen is that these can actually start to sun rot. So the vinyl will deteriorate and break down in the sun. Become more brittle, a lot easier to break. And again, we're gonna go ahead and just test fit that to make sure that that fits. I'm stuffed in here. I can see this bracket's hitting, that one is hitting, and that bottom one is hitting which puts all my brackets in the same line. Another thing that you could do with this, looking at it now, is you could set the center screw like I did, leave it loose, put your panel in, screw your panel to the brackets, and then be able to lift everything up and set everything all in place at once as well. It's probably in this book somewhere. You should do it, something like that. All right, now we need to figure out how wide we need to cut that panel to. So 62 and an eighth. Measure all three just to make sure. 62 and an eighth overall. 62 and an eighth. And I just drew on the plastic, I didn't draw on the vinyl. I need to cut three and a half inches off. So I'm gonna set my saw up to take off three and a half inches and I'm gonna run this whole panel through it. So as you can see, we have one cut edge and one non-cut edge. That's exactly what it'd be like if you ran into a section, came up to a gate, came up to a house, came up to a corner, any sort of a termination point. You're gonna have to look at having to cut this yourself. You could do it with a skill saw, you could do it with a knife. If you do it with a knife, it's gonna take you a lot longer. 
Make sure you have a really fine blade on that table saw. If you don't, you're gonna start chipping this thing out and you don't have any way to hide it whatsoever. You wanna make sure and have a really nice, really, really nice fine cut there. Now, one thing to take into consideration if you are gonna install this kind of a fence, make sure to leave yourself enough room up here to put a cap on. If the panel is 70 inches, consider going 72. Now we have these cool little caps. They're just gonna go over there and protect all your screws. Make you feel nice and warm and fuzzy about yourself to make it look like you got a screwless fence. But you're not really saving any money. That's the funny thing. After buying all these parts and pieces, you're not really saving any money between buying this fence and that fence. Now, now, if you're not very good at running a tape measure, uh, you might want to stick to installing this one. This one requires a lot more thought. All the little lines on a tape measure, yeah, that really matters on this style of fence. One other thing to take into consideration is, if this one is $10 cheaper, how much is your time worth? You're wanting to install this one, make sure to allow yourself a little bit more time than that one. That one's more of a snap together system, with this one is more of a screw together system. We're gonna go ahead and install our section of vinyl fence. We're gonna use some three quarter inch self-tapping screws. We're gonna use that to adhere U-channel. We call this a U-channel. We're gonna use this to screw to the posts. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go in between the holes and it's gonna receive each end of the picket there. It makes a cleaner look and also helps when the wind comes up. Now the reason that we use self-tappers on vinyl and not just a typical sheet metal screw, that little portion of the drill bit there makes a cleaner hole, gets the job done faster. Typically what I do is I use three screws, top, bottom, middle. And what we want to do is we want to add an inch and a half for each side of the rail. So we want to add three inches to the overall measurement that we get. So we have 87 inches. We're going to cut those at 90 inches. You can use a Sharpie if you want. Because ultimately, you're not going to see it because it's going to go inside that post. All right. Just like that. Just like the first section of the fence that we did, we're going to go ahead and notch the rails. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who <laughs> set that section to fit? No, I just cut them off camera. And that's what those tabs do. The tabs keep the rail in place. As you can see, our pickets are wider. They do come with dirt already on them, but that's okay, it's just love and care. We have had this sitting here for a while and um, somebody might have forgot to wrap it. It is brand new vinyl, it's just dirt and water and snow and ice. Now we are gonna go ahead and do that same thing. We're gonna pull at the bottom, take that measurement. So I need a piece that's eight inches. When I started installing that, I showed you guys the inside of the rail. Now there's nothing that I'm trying to hide here. I'm not trying to say yours sucks, mine's better, even though I just did. But here is what the inside of our rail looks like. It has one, two, three ribs. This one holds the bottom. I cannot pull it apart. This is designed to hold the whole entire weight of the section. Now, if you're going to be doing this, I would recommend a set of sawhorses with some carpet that you could protect your vinyl with to help with scratching and whatever else have you. Minus, minus all my dirt, my stains. It wasn't supposed to be there. It is brand new vinyl. Uh, I brought this over probably about two months ago and I forgot to cover it up. So uh, that is my fault. And if we had a nice day, I would be able to wash all this off and it would look just as clean as that stuff. Let's talk about these things. We've seen them before in other videos. These are rail locks. We have found them to be very beneficial for us because we live in the high wind area. Even though we have the notches on there, the rail crimps, wind can still blow that out. We've been amazed and astonished with the power that wind has. So therefore we've started installing these as well. 
and that just links everything together. It daisy chains everything so that nothing can be blown apart. We're gonna take two screws. We're gonna go inside the post and we're gonna screw this through this hole and into the top of that rail. That just gives us reassurance that our fence isn't gonna get blown apart. Should anybody wanna take it apart, they're gonna to have to pull these out first. Oh, hold on, I didn't put on a cap. You don't have a use or a need for a giant tube of glue. One fluid ounce, that's all we give you, plenty. This will do a standard house. Just a little dab. You don't even need to go on all four sides, you just need to go on two sides. A five by five gothic cap. If you're looking for something like that, make sure and see the link below. This kind of cap is an external flat cap. While it doesn't have all the decoration of that one, it's more just to cover the top to give it a little bit of trim, a little bit of accent. So between our fence and the big box store pro grade fence, they both come with that U-channel. They both are a six foot fence. Ours is just a little bit shorter than theirs. Theirs is a true six foot. Ours is six foot from the bottom to the top of the post. We saw some questionable characteristics in the rail and the silicone thing and I don't know what to tell you. As far as install, these two installed really easy. Now this one right here, it has a seam on the edge of the post and a seam on the edge of the post. It has brackets, has screws, fasteners to make the whole system work. You don't have to build the panel, but you still have to screw the panel to the post. So in the end, this one took more work, I feel, in my opinion, than that one and that one. As far as quality, this one seems like it's great right now. As the sun hits it, it's gonna to start to break down. It's gonna get weaker and weaker, and everything's gonna start coming apart. You're gonna to have to start doing a lot of replacing. Super thin. It's not a snap together system. If you break this picket, you have to buy that whole entire new panel. A whole brand new panel could be anywhere from $120 to $150. This system, let me make a recommendation to you. When you do your fence, buy one extra section or two. The reason I say that is because if you install this later on down the road, you do break a picket, you still have pickets from that style to replace that broken picket. Again, this one right here, you still have to buy everything by the section. If you need to fill a two foot chunk, you're gonna have to buy one whole section kit just to be able to fill that two foot chunk. As far as this, we can build it however you want and we sell that, it just goes by the foot. If you break a rail, we can sell you just rail. If you break one picket, we can come and replace your one broken picket. If you break a bottom rail, we can pull a whole section apart and install one bottom rail. You don't have to buy all these extra parts and pieces just in case something goes wrong. Now, if you guys want to see how to build one of our vinyl gate kits for a, a white vinyl privacy fence, make sure and see that video right here. If you guys want to see how we install a white closed top picket vinyl fence on a mo curb, make sure and see that video right here. It's Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's fence and gate company. And we hope you have a good dang day. Hey! hey.